not related to the coronavirus. And I think that's a really good thing because otherwise you do end up with the situation that we had back in about March, April time where everybody was basically saying the same things. Um, and I, I, you know, it's not a criticism at all, but because everybody was doing the same thing, um, we saw a lot of very similar ads. There was actually a YouTube video going around that showed all the kind of cliches that people were using, um, and very similar backing tracks that people were using on their TV ads um, as a result, of, as a response to the pandemic. Now, there's been some amazing research from a guy called Peter Field, which I would strongly recommend that you guys check out, um, which looks at how brands uh, reacted after the 2008 recession. Um, you know, there's a fear that we are in a similar position at the moment, that it's almost like a, a pseudo recession, but we are, you know, what lessons can be learned from that? And basically what he saw in 2008 is that by investing in share of voice, brands are more likely to drive strong growth during a recession. So when it comes to an excess share of voice of over 8%, a brand is more likely to see um, higher market share growth. The good news is that you don't necessarily need to spend more money um, or a huge amount of money in order to maintain or grow your share of voice. In terms of our results at Electric House, we've seen a 57% decrease in cost per life as more and more brands pull out of advertising on social during this time. And as a result, we've seen a 44% decrease CPM because you know, at the end of the day, social media advertising is an auction. With less people advertising, that auction price goes down. So you don't have to necessarily spend as much to be able to maintain or grow your share of voice. And just going back to that Peter Field research, investing in share of voice during recession also drives long term profit growth. So if you can, um, looking to have an excess share of voice of over 8% based on the 2018 study, shows um, very large profit growth. That is like an hours long presentation, which I've kind of distilled into two slides. Um, so I really recommend that you guys check it out. There's a lot of really interesting and useful stuff in there as well. Um, and as the uh, global head of media for Kansas said, brand health becomes vulnerable when companies stop advertising. It's all about making sure that when this um, is over, when things go back to normal, your brand is the one that people remember, think highly of. Um, that's one that they choose. And actually, with everything that I've talked about with Pred, be it their recipes or the way that they've handled um, their staff and uh, key workers, we've seen the positive buzz around Pred during this pandemic, even when they were closed, massively risen. I'm sure that they will pay, pay dividends when things are open. Um, some good news, uh, I was quite surprised at this, uh, but 65% of UK respondents don't expect COVID-19 to have a dramatic effect on their personal finances. Um, and as a result, leisure behaviour is likely to go back to normal. When talking about post-outbreak leisure behaviours, the majority of people are not too worried about um, things like cancelling a gym membership or eating less fast food or visiting the cinema less often. These people are absolutely raring to go. They want these things to come back and they want to make the most of them as soon as they do. Which is something that we saw when McDonald's reopened in the UK. This was a queue for the McDonald's drive through the first day that it reopened. And I can keep talking because it's going to keep going. Um, we don't have to play the whole thing. You can see the golden arches there in the distance. But yeah, that is what we're dealing with at the moment. People cannot wait. Things go back to normal um, and go back to their favourite kind of leisure activities such as eating out in restaurants. So, you know, that's a 99p cheeseburger. Um, in terms of those big purchases like a car or a big holiday, that's probably the most likely to see being delayed. 66% of people will say they will delay a big purpose, a uh, big purchase, sorry, um, because of the coronavirus outbreak. Um, and also, it's interesting to see that 35% of people are going to wait for products to be on promotion or discount. Um, so, that's something to consider as well. So what we think as well is that 2021 will be the year of the staycation. So 49% of people say that they will have a domestic vacation in their country, and 30% say that they'll have a staycation in their local area. Now, we've all seen the headlines of you know China's air pollution going down as a result of the lockdown. We've seen the uh, jellyfish that is swimming through Venice, and we've seen you know, less cars and less litter in places. The environment has 100% benefited from this, but based on what we can see, it sadly looks as though that has purely based on people's own travel safety concerns, 
not kind of concerns around their finances or the environment. That is what has been kind of pushing the environment um, positive that we've seen. And based on what we've seen on the kind of dress rehearsal as things start to reopen, um, unfortunately, it's not looking like that's going to be um, carrying on. Already, KFC have had to release this advert encouraging people not to throw their rubbish um, anywhere but in um, because people are already stuck on it, so just go back to their kind of usual ways, which is obviously really, really sad to see. Um, but you'll notice this ad, um, it's very lo fi, it uses user generated content, or at least it looks like it, um, it doesn't move, there's no animation, it has text, um, very well written. But um, fundamentally, it is um, a more basic ad um, than you might expect a brand like KFC to see. And that's because we've got these new rules now around creating content during lockdown. So people are having to rely much more on animation or the design that you saw just there. Um, reusing evergreen content, so posts or uh, video that worked previously and then maybe slightly updating it, or just doing kind of a throwback or remember when much more of a reliance on user-generated content for advertising and also uh, just embracing this new normal. So a really nice example of that coming up here is a Virgin Media ad which um, clearly didn't need any sort of crew or actors or cameramen. This is kind of real UGC um, put together in a beautiful way with post-production. Is it working? starting to reshoot as of last week um, we make sure that we have specific rules that we are maintaining for all of our staff safety um, and also keeping two meters apart at all times as well um, we actually have a full list of regulations that we need to check up on uh, make sure that we're adhering to make sure that it's really official and that everybody has agreed on that both our clients and our teams as well so if you guys are looking to start to recreate content i definitely encourage you to do something similar um, and this is an example from Nike from the very beginning of the pandemic. You know, this is Nike who do these bombastic Super Bowl ads. They do two-hour live marathon broadcasts on Facebook. Um, and this was their ad on Instagram at the very beginning. You know, it's, it's a black and white, beautifully written, still image that says, you ever dreamed of playing for from around the world? Now's the chance. Play inside. Play for the world. Um, and I think people are becoming a lot more uh, accepting of it. Uh, the fact that it's not possible to do these big shoots with lots of actors all close together anymore. Um, and actually, it's something that I've been advocating for a long time. We know that some of the best performing content can just be a simple image, or it can just be more like a UGC feel, uh, particularly on social. And another example we've seen was Budweiser, who reintroduced their um, What's Up ads from uh, the early 2000s. Very much changing it though, so the voiceover was changed to say, you know, just in quarantine and having a bug. Um, the whole point of the advert was to make sure that you check in on their friends, make sure that they're okay while they're locked down and not necessarily catching up face to face anymore. So, if you are creating content at this time, I would just encourage you to be useful. So, that might be raising a smile as we saw with the Virgin ads or the Budweiser ads, um, or you know, reminding people of happier times, uh, which I think the Budweiser ad does really well as well, or just showing how you, know, you can keep people occupied during lockdown or ways to stay safe or services that you offer that really are useful to them. It's a terrible, terrible time. So 
with all of that in mind, you know, as a publisher, these are our focuses for 2020. So, like we saw, lots more use on Instagram. So we're going to really double down on stories. We know that Facebook has said that we're going to get to a point where more people are looking at Instagram stories and Facebook stories than they are on the actual feed itself. So that's something that we definitely want to be there for. On a budget, as we saw, DIY has never been more popular. And obviously, given people's financial situation, uh, you know, there are going to be less of these big purchases. So how can we encourage people to do things and uh, celebrate people doing things on a budget? So we're going to be looking at how we can bring that to more platforms. We're going to increase our live broadcasts. We're already well established at doing lives, but now that it's very much in the mainstream and people kind of understand it and accept it, so we're, going to make, we're going to keep doing that in the future. Continue to go on TikTok because we really believe that that is the next big one. We are already on it, as you saw, but we're going to make sure that we're putting more effort into it and making the most out of it. And then as we saw with that last one, just about um, how we uh, are now producing things, maintaining and improving staff well-being. And this comes down to um, your, your brand purpose as well. I promise nobody at Electric House told me to say this, but I can really feel it as part of the business. You know, maintaining people's health mentally and physically, as we are all working from home, you know, we haven't been in the office for a number of months now, making sure that morale is kept up, but also that we're really safe as part of doing our job, making sure you guys are doing that too with your companies as well.